coronavirus, Middle East peace plan, the cashless society, and conflict with China are all subjects that are dominating our news on a daily basis. These subjects are also all included in the prophecies of the end time. We'll talk about these things and much more on today's edition of End of the Age. Well, this is open line. That means it's your day. So we can talk about whatever you would like to talk about. The number to call to be on the air with me, 877-END-TIME. That's 877-363-8463. You can start dialing right now. Uh, Before we actually come to the phones, I want to announce to you that we will be doing a prophecy conference next week. It will be next Saturday, August the 15th in Fort Worth, Texas. My subject will be 666, the cashless society. I mean, we are making progress toward the cashless society with breathtaking speed. And that speed has been added to by the coronavirus. So it's gonna be an important session that Saturday night, August the uh, the 15th at 6 p.m. The location will be the Pentecostals of Fort Worth, 10264 West Point Boulevard, Fort Worth, Texas. And if you need to contact the church, if you have any questions about the arrangements, the phone number there is 817-560-3433. Now that's on a Saturday, then on Sunday, August the 16th at 10 a.m., I will be speaking on breaking prophetic fulfillments and we'll be updating everybody on the latest things that are, are developing. So it's been a while since we've been able to have a conference because of the coronavirus, but we've made arrangements to be able to do it with you uh, this coming uh, a week from uh, tomorrow night uh, on the 15th and the 16th. So plan to be out there. It's going to be a great time. I don't know for sure when we'll be able to have our next conference. So you don't want to miss this particular one. If you need more information, you can go to our website, endtime.com, look under events, and there you will see conferences and you can get all the pertinent information that you need. Well, so many things happening. It's like the prophecies are converging on us from every direction. Uh, So we're going to be talking about a lot of things today, whatever you want to talk about. But we're going to get started right now. And we're going to go first of all to Jim. Jim in the truck. Hello, Jim. Hey, praise the Lord, Dan. Baxter, brother. Praise God. How you doing? I'm doing great. What's on your mind today? Well, uh, I, one of my old pastors back in the day, uh, probably 30 years ago, uh, I got to talking to him. And he used to be pre-trib, and the good news is he's not pre-trib anymore. He's post-trib, but he, he knows about you, but he's not sure about some. He doesn't think that we've entered the trumpets. He talked about the, the first one. He thought it was the second, but the first one, with the, it says the Grass was burnt up and, the, and uh, the green trees, one-third of them. But he says that's just not true. He goes, one-third of the ships was destroyed, but not that. And then he also said that the thing about Chernobyl, he said that was very smart of you to figure out that it was Wormwood and the story about how you called the librarian. and She actually knew about it, which was definitely the Lord. But uh, why would he say that... Uh, First trumpet, I believe it was World War One. Second one was World War Two. Uh, he said that the first one was only it was not one third 
of the green grass and the trees. What do you say about that? Was that regional or what would you say? Well, you know, in the, under the second trumpet, it said one th third of the ships were destroyed. And we have absolute documentation of how many ships participated in World War II and how many of those were sunk. And it's just almost one third on the money. Well, after I figured that out and God opened my understanding to that, I went back to the first trumpet. And if the second trumpet was World War II, then it seemed logical to me that the first trumpet could be World War I. And it talked about the grass being burned up. And I was trying to figure out well, what happened during World War I. And I remembered in school uh, studying about the scorched earth policy. What happened was uh, when Germany and France were involved in bitter battle, uh, and also, of course, it was the allies against the uh, other powers that were allied with Germany. Uh, whenever one side would take ground, they had a policy of destroying everything that was there, all the food, all the vegetation, because if they then lost that ground, they didn't want to leave anything to help the other side sustain themselves and continue to live. Both of the sides actually uh, observed this policy. It was called the scorched earth policy. Now, when you talk about one third of the grass, yeah, you, you know, there's no way you can prove that conclusively unless you go back to see, okay, uh, what nations were involved, what part of them were destroyed. We can't do that scientifically. Nevertheless, there is so much information, I believe we have the right proof. Major internet companies are silencing and censoring Christian voices online. These companies are trying to control what you see and hear. Almost 200 videos of ours have been marked as restricted online right now. That's why we launched End of the Age Plus, a platform where the truth won't be censored, a platform where we can preach the message of the gospel. When you subscribe to End of the Age Plus today for just $12.99 a month, you can watch all of our content in a secure, easy to view way from your favorite device. When you go to watch.endtime.com and subscribe, you'll get instant access to all of our teaching resources, including Revelation, the unveiling of Jesus Christ, Understanding the End Time, End Time Magazine, and so much more. We will not censor our message to comply with what the world deems as politically correct. Go to watch.endtime.com right now or search End of the Age Plus in the App Store or Google Play. We've seen Bible prophecy fulfilled like never before. From the halls of the United Nations to the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, End Time Ministries continues to reveal the Bible prophecy in the news headlines around the world every day. Whether it's through our broadcast or online at our Jerusalem Prophecy College, your gifts enable us to put vital materials in the hands of those who need it most. Because of you, we continue to replace fear with faith in the hearts of Christians around the world. We will continue to see prophecy come to pass at an even swifter pace. We need your support. Your donation of any amount enables us to continue to broadcast and be a voice in the ever-growing censored media. To become a partner or give a one-time gift, visit endtime.com or call 1-800-END-TIME right now. That's 800-363-8463. Go online now. Visit endtime.com. You know, our first caller, Jim, brought up the fact that his pastor was wrestling with could the trumpets actually have sounded part of them or all of them. And I'll never forget back when I was just beginning to study the book of Revelation, I'd always been taught that everything from chapter 4, verse 1 on was future and would all occur during the final seven years. Well, as I began to study and try to see if I could support all of these beliefs, uh, I uh, noticed that the four horses, I, I found the identity of the four horses, Catholicism, communism, capitalism, and Islamism. And once I realized that those first four horses have already been unleashed in the earth, then I knew the opinion that everything after chapter four on uh, had to be during the final seven years. I knew that was incorrect. 
So that I started rearranging everything in my mind. And then when I learned about the third trumpet being Chernobyl, which happened in 1986, that opened my mind up to a totally different way of thinking. And so I had to reevaluate everything. So uh, one, one thing that has locked people into believing that everything after chapter 4, verse 1 will occur in the final seven years is they believe that the Great Tribulation is seven years and that those final seven years will begin at the rapture, which they think happens in chapter 4, verse 1. Because a voice said to John there, Come up hither, I will show thee things which must be hereafter. They say, Look, there's the rapture. However, just because you see the words come up hither, that doesn't mean it's the rapture because that phrase is several times in the book of Revelation. I believe it's also at the seventh trumpet we see the phrase come up hither. So consequently, uh, that the fact that, that the whole pre-trib doctrine was built on that one little phrase, come up hither, it was simply saying, come up hither, John, I want to show you things hereafter now. It had nothing to do whatsoever with the rapture. Nevertheless, uh, once I understood that and understood that many of the things of the book of Revelation, Revelation have already happened, once I understood the first four seals have been opened, and once I understood now that the first five trumpets have blown, uh, then once I saw all those things and once I understood those things, then it became clear to me that my understanding of the book of Revelation was totally flawed and that the book of Revelation covers a long period of time. As a matter of fact, once you get to chapter 20, now you move into another 1,000 years. And then after the 1,000 years, there'll be another short season when Satan is loosed again on the earth after having been bound for a 1,000 years. Once you see that in its proper perspective, everything begins to open up. So anyway, just a little bit of follow-up commentary to what Jim had to say today. Let's get right on with our callers. Uh, now in Texas, Jesse is calling. Hello, Jesse. Hello. You're on the air. Hello. Yes. What's yeah. Your, um. Oh, go ahead. What's your question? Um. Is well, I um. I may I, I um. It's kind of hard to say. I just wonder is it possible if you step back into your your old ways, um. And you know you made a promise that you wouldn't do it, um. It's like I'm wondering if we're lying to, you know, to God and stuff about it, you know, and I feel bad, real bad about it. And sometimes I find myself weeping because I'm, I'm, I'm want to know how bad is it? You know, I'm, I'm asking, you know, I'm asking the Lord, how bad is it? Okay. You know, can I? Well, okay. Jesse, uh, you know, once you repent and give your heart and life to Jesus Christ and determine to live for him forever, the best thing is that you continue to walk in that path. However, there are examples in the Bible of people who backslid from that path and went out and lived in the world and loved the things of the world. And yet later on, they were able to recover. One classic example is the prodigal son, the parable that Jesus gave, how that he left his father's house and he went out and lived with the harlots and with all the party crowd. And finally, he ended up broke. And then he decided, I need to go home. Well, he did, and he immediately, he, didn't, he was afraid he wouldn't find a place of repentance. He was afraid his father would not receive him back. But instead, even while he was far off from his house, his dad was out looking down the road, expecting him to come home. And when he saw him, he fell on, he ran to him, fell on his neck and, and embraced him and received him back gladly. So uh, if you have gotten away from the Lord, uh, one place the Bible says, repent and do your first works. So just start all over. And you can do that. So just go before the Lord again, give him your heart and ask him for, your, for strength. And then uh, decide to do some things you didn't do before. For example, one reason people fall away is because they never become 
rooted and grounded. They never have a strong enough foundation. So I would really encourage you to enroll in the Jerusalem Prophecy College because that's 155 lessons, uh, 11 semesters that will really provide you with the basis. It'll explain salvation, how it works and what to do after you're saved. If you make a mistake, how do you fix it? It goes into all those details. So Jesse, you can get back do it immediately. And if you make a mistake, get up, dust your knees off and keep on walking with the Lord. And like I say, I really encourage you to enroll in the Jerusalem Prophecy College. Yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to do. If, if will he still accept me after, you know, I messed up? Well, he that's will. All. Uh, because, you know, some people think that God is just a tyrant but, you know, Satan sure took you back quick, didn't he? Yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I just, I said, what was I thinking? You know, what, what why? I mean, you know, I let my guard down and bam. So, you know. Uh, the question is, who loves you more, Satan or the Lord? The Lord. So if Satan took you the back Lord. quick, that means the Lord will take you back quicker, right? Yes. All right then don't let the devil talk to you. Don't let him so down in your mind. Just repent of what you've done and get back with the Lord and make up your mind that this time you're going to have deeper roots. You know, a tree is strong and is able to stay in the storm if it has a strong root system. A lot of Christians get saved, but they don't even really understand their salvation. They don't know as much about the Lord as they should. Consequently, their root system is shallow and they're easily toppled. That's the reason I really recommend to you that you would get enrolled in a course like uh, Jerusalem Prophecy College and really, really get your roots down and you'll know how to deal with the things that Satan throws at you. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, well, do, thank you. All right, thank you very much, Jesse, and all you out there. Maybe you think maybe your roots weren't deep enough. You're having problems, and you're interested in the Jerusalem Prophecy College. Here's what you do go to JerusalemProphecyCollege.com, then register, enroll in your first course, and work on it every day. If it's a half hour or an hour a day, do it. And you'll find that the more of God's word that you take in, the more it will stabilize you and you'll become a strong, stable Christian. Uh, thank you very much, Jesse, for your phone call. Uh, let's go now out to Oregon. And Kathy's calling from Oregon. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Brother Baxter. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm doing wonderful. My, thank you. Good, good, good. My question is, if I can word this right, is... Um, we're being taught that it doesn't appear that the United States will be in the mark of the beast system, which is definitely a good thing. But I'm thinking that if that's the way that the Bible is teaching, it looks like President Trump will be reelected again, because we know that if the other side gets in, that's not the direction that they want to go. Uh, your thoughts on that, please? Well, uh, it looks like that is the case because the Bible clearly teaches that America will not be a part of the new world order, the one world government of the Antichrist, uh, and we also will defend Israel against the Antichrist. So uh, all the logic says, well, in that case, since, uh, uh, since uh, Vice President Biden is very much a one worlder and under the administration of Barack Obama, they were leading us very rapidly into the one world governmental system and global governance, then it looks like probably that President Trump will be reelected. Now, what if there's something we're missing and he's not reelected? Well, maybe things will go on hold for four years. I don't know. It looks like to me that he will be reelected, even though all the polls are saying right now that he's behind. So all I'm, all I'm saying to all of you out there, let's all be much in prayer. We don't want our nation to be a part of the kingdom of the Antichrist. We do not want the mark of the beast to be implemented here in the United States of America. And I believe if we do the right thing, that those thing, things will not happen. So I hope you're praying every day. I am praying every day that God's will will be done in the earth as it is in heaven. And uh, I look, it looks like to me that's the direction we're headed. 
Yes, and I believe that is uh, the same, and I just thank you for everything that you do. And, uh, you know, whenever I ask questions of you, I know that you're not God, but you have so much knowledge. God has blessed you with that. We appreciate you. We love you. And uh, people need to vote, and we need to stay on our knees. Yeah. And uh, that's all we can do. That's, yeah. that's our main line of defense. So thank you so much. Yes, keep praying, and whatever you do, if you break both legs, break both arms, go vote anyway. Because (laughs) this may be one of the most important elections we have ever faced because, well, it just, it looks like we're going to enter the final seven years. We could enter the final seven years even before the election on November the 3rd. Now, let's remember this, though. Donald Trump is not our savior. Nobody else is our savior. No matter who is elected, God's will is still going to be done. We do not war against flesh and blood. We war against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. So the number one thing for us to do is pray. The second thing is make sure you and the entire family and everyone that you can influence does vote so that we can have a leadership that lead that leans toward the will of God rather than leading us in the opposite direction. Uh, thank you very much. Appreciate the phone call. Uh, let's go now to Donald calling from Georgia. Hello, Donald. Hi, Brother Baxter. I have a very interesting question here. Probably a leap for me, but (laughs) I've never studied the book of Revelation so much as I have since I've been following your ministry. But in the 22nd, well, in the 21st chapter, it describes the, the New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven. And then the 22nd chapter begins to talk about the river of life and the trees. And then it uh, kind of throws something at me that it seems like everything's over with and we're in the new Jerusalem. It just but said, blessed are those who, in verse 14 of 22, it says, blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and enter through the gates into the city. Then it says this, outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and mortars and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices a lie. My question is, is this referring to, uh, is it the is it the thousand year period where people will still be alive and outside the city? Or will people still be alive and going on and even when he comes back. Uh, No, Donald, the key here is that the book of Revelation is not in chronological order because we have four different accounts of the second coming in the book of Revelation. Chapter number 8, verse number 5, chapter number 11, verse number uh, 15, chapter number 14, verse 14 through 18, chapter number 19, uh, verses Uh, 11 through 20. So we have four different accounts of the second coming. Then, even after the second coming, it then describes the new Jerusalem. And the angel that is escorting John says, uh, come hither, I will show thee the lamb's wife, the new Jerusalem. So the wife of the lamb is the church. So the new Jerusalem there is symbolic of the church. It's interesting that you would ask this question because I just taught this lesson just a week or so ago uh, as the um, 19th lesson of our Revelation commentary. So I'm very familiar with what you're speaking of here. So what happens is after he talks all about the new Jerusalem into chapter 22 down through verse 5, then he backs up to start summarizing. And that's when he says, okay, I'm going to come quickly. Now, he's already talked about his coming four times in the book of Revelation. He's already really? talked about the new Jerusalem, described everything it's going to be like. And then he pauses because now we're in the last chapter of the book of Revelation. So he's, he's uh, backing up and he's saying, behold, I come quickly. Now, remember, he's given this to John about 95 or 96 A.D., I'm coming Uh quickly, 
My reward is with me. And this is going to be a message to everyone that will live from John's time until the time of the rapture. And he says, he went ahead to say, uh, outside of the city, which is the church, outside the church is dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So he's warning us there. Uh, So this is not in chronological order. He's talking about the way things will be up until his coming. And he said, I'm coming quick. So if you're living a sinful life, get it fixed, get it straightened out. That's what it's all about. Okay. That's, that's very interesting. Like I said, this is a a lot of new, new things to me, even though I, I've been preaching for 40 years, but I've never, like I said, really, really got into the book of Revelation but you're making things so much clearer, and so I certainly appreciate your teaching on this and using this material, and uh, I just thank you so much. Well, thank you. I appreciate the phone call. Appreciate all your good work through the years. And let me say to everybody out there, uh, I will be teaching lesson number 19 of volume two of the book of Revelation. I'll be doing that on Monday. And then I have one lesson to go, which I'm hoping to complete within the next week after that. And then all of this will go to our editors and volume two. Many of you already have volume one of Revelation. It comes both in videos and in a beautiful hardback book form. You can buy it as a package. Uh, It's a collector's item. And I believe that God wanted us to produce this for these times in which we live, because we live right now in the time when the book of Revelation is being fulfilled all around us. So volume two is going to be ready sometime, probably around the end of October, we are hoping, uh, something like that, because my part will be finished in another week or so. So I'm, I've been working on this for a long, long time. I know many of you have prayed for me to get it done. Well, it's almost done. Now we have another half an hour to go. So all of you that are on the line, just stay right there with us. You're listening to End of the Age. If you're not yet a member of the uh, the partnership of End Time Ministries, we would love to have you on board. If you want to be a partner, call our operators at 800 End Time or you can go to, to online, endtime.com. Move Mountains with Irvin Baxter. This book by Irvin's grandson provides 30 days of devotion that will enhance your relationship with God and others. Authentic illustrations from early morning devotions at end time will help you find your purpose and eliminate fears. Commit to taking this 30-day journey and experience real life change. Get your book for only $14.99. Call 1-800-363-8463 or go to endtime.com slash move. I have left a piece of my heart in Israel and her people. We would like to thank End Time for doing such an awesome job with our Israel tour. We marvel at your team keeping the time schedule, keeping everyone comfortable, the wonderful driver, the brilliant guide, the entire tour program, good hotel choices, and stellar food. We had the privilege to rub shoulders with Pastor Baxter listened to his current teachings, and had some interesting questions answered so eloquently. He is wonderful. Helene from Australia. Experience the Holy Land in the most amazing way. Join Irvin and Judy Baxter for our upcoming Israel tour. For more information, go to endtime.com or call 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-363. Eight four six three. If your station only carries the first 30 minutes of End of the Age, go to endtime.com and click the watch button to continue today's broadcast. You can also finish up later by clicking the archive button. We do have a full bank of callers. I'll be moving through those as quickly as I can. However, before we go back to our callers, I want to remind you once again, the first prophecy conference we've held for a while because of the coronavirus, none of the churches have been able to accommodate it. Nevertheless, a week from tomorrow night, that will be August the 15th on Saturday at 6 p.m., I am going to be in Fort Worth, 
Texas at the Pentecostals of Fort Worth, 101264. Uh, Let me do that again. 10264 West Point Boulevard, Fort Worth, Texas. If you have any questions about the meeting, the number to call is 817-560-3433. Now that's on Saturday night at 6, and then Sunday evening or Sunday at morning at uh, 10 o'clock, that's the 16th of August, I will be back again. I will be speaking on breaking prophetic fulfillments. We'll be bringing you up to date on the latest things that have happened. So I would encourage you to be to both of those sessions if you possibly can. That's the 15th at 6 p.m. and the 16th at 10 a.m. Hope I can see you there. We're going to go right back to the phones now. And we're going way across the world to New Zealand. Alan is calling. Hello, Alan. How are you doing today, Ewan? Ah, doing great. Thank you. Uh, it's been a while since I've called in, but I decided I wanted to call in today and catch up with you. Hey, Irvin, um, first of all, um, our country is going through an election process in about 40 days, and it looks like socialism is going to get... Uh, completely in and overtake our country, something that's kind of really interesting to watch how the New Zealand public is, or a large majority of them is just um, adamant, you know, we really want socialism and after all of the stuff that's been going on, so ask our listeners around the world, join us in prayer and pray that we don't uh, completely get swamped in socialism and become the Zimbabwe or the Pacific. Well, you know, Alan, uh, there's a there's a, uh, an antidote for what's happening in your country of New Zealand right now. And that is teach, teach, teach. Spread the wor word as far and fast as you can because it, it's obvious that the tentacles of the one world government are closing in on you right now. So just spread the word as much because the antidote to deception is the truth. And I know you are doing that. Get as many others as you can to join you. Encourage people to get a copy of our uh, DVDs, the Understand the End Time, and have as many people view those as possible because once people acquire an understanding, they will no longer be susceptible to, to being deceived by the message of socialism. So that's what you've got to be doing as well as praying. Yes. Because uh, our Prime Minister is adamant she wants to make our country the first in the world and be the leader in Agenda 21 and 2030. So it's pretty scary what that document holds and they wanted to implement that and make us the first in the world and an example of it. So it's not going to be good. But Irvin, I do have a question. I do have a comment. First of all, I seen yesterday on RT they were talking about the peace agreement, why Israel hasn't... I know you haven't touched on it from this view, but I'll, let me just share this view. They asked why hasn't Netanyahu implemented the um, annexation of the area. And the commentator was talking about, at the moment, the Israelis have... There is two cases pending in the ICC, one for the Fatilla um, from a few years back and one from the 2014 operation they had. Now, they were saying that if Israel... Uh, annexes that and it moves, makes the Palestinians a state, then the state of Palestine can actually bring the court case against Israel. But they said at the moment the lawyers are arguing arguing that Palestinians aren't a state, so the case can't be heard. So I w wondered what your thought was on that, but that's why they were saying there's a hold-up at the moment. This underlying factor of the ICC is ready to pounce on Israel if the Palestinians become a state. Alan, I really don't believe that's the holdup because they have already allowed the Palestinians to become a member of the International Criminal Court. That's the reason the case is being brought uh, because uh, after the General Assembly voted to recognize Palestine as a non-member state, a state but not a member of the United Nations, from that point on, the Palestinians have joined many of the international uh, structures and uh, the ICC, the International Criminal Court is one of those. So I really don't think that is what is holding things back. 
I believe the thing holding things back, and I spent a lot of time on this on our program here on Wednesday, I believe it's because President Trump is probably trying to work out a deal behind the scenes, and I have an article that states from one of the officials of the uh, Palestinians that they are in secret conversations with both Israel and the United States of America. I think Trump wants to be able to announce a deal even maybe before the elections in November the 3rd. So that's my opinion. Okay, very good. Thanks for your time again. It was okay. great to be able to call in. I'd like to thank all your supporters because your supporters support your program and I have been uh, we've had many people contact me through End Time in New Zealand and, or, and other places because of the support, so I'm really grateful for their support. I appreciate you saying that, Alan, and our supporters need to hear that. We have wonderful supporters, but this message goes around the world, and we know that many people are getting saved around the world, so we do thank all of you that support this program faithfully month after month. Uh, you are so important. Now let's go to Hawaii. Uh, Luke is calling from Hawaii. Hello, Luke. Hello. Can you hear me? Sure can. What's on your mind? Hi. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to make a comment. I just wanted to uh, thank you and thanks and praise of God for your ministry. We learned a lot about uh, Bible prophecy throughout the years from your ministry alone. Uh, just may God bless you. Continue to bless your ministry and give you more revelations. Of the thank you. Prophecies to share with the uh, with his body. Well, thank uh, you very much for uh, that. Luke. I just had two questions. You had uh, time. Uh, the first question I had was why? Why are you? Why are there certain uh, verses in the Bible missing in the New Testament? For example, like uh, Matthew seventeen twenty one, John five four, Luke seventeen thirty six, and a bunch of other ones. And then the second question I had is how sure are you? with uh, Israel being protected by the wings of an eagle in the last three and a half years versus it being the first three and a half years of the final seven years. Well, let me answer and I'll the go ahead and I'll take my answer off the, uh, off the line. Thank you, sir. Okay. Well, thank you, Luke. Let me answer the last question first. I'm really quite sure because the Bible says clearly that Satan will make war against uh, the angels of heaven and Michael, the warrior angel of heaven, will lead the angels of heaven against the angels of Satan, and Satan will be defeated. And then the Bible says that his he will be sentenced to being confined to the earth, no longer having access to the heavens, and therefore he will go forward to make war against the woman for time, times, and half a time which is three and a half years. So that is the length of the great tribulation period. And when you get down to verse 14, when it says that Satan was making war against Israel, that there will be given to her two wings of a, a great eagle that she might be protected for time, times, and have a time. The only place in the entire scripture that we see that phraseology being used, it's always, always, and it's used like four or five or six times. It's always being used about the final three and a half years. Uh, for example, Daniel chapter 7, verse 25, uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse number 7, and several other places it uses this terminology time, times, and half a time, and it's always referring to the Great Tribulation, which is the final three and a half years. That's the best I can answer you. And then as far as any missing scriptures, uh, there are a few scriptures like that where they are missing. Uh, the scriptures that you're referring to are not critical to understanding salvation. So I wouldn't blow it out of proportion over much. Uh, there are just some uh, translations of the Bible. The publishers made a decision somewhere that they were to leave out certain verses. Uh, I personally think that most of those decisions were in error, but whether they were or not, the big thing is we must understand salvation. How are you born again? What does it take to be born again? And that is taught so many different ways from so many different angles in the Bible that there's simply no doubt about it. If anybody out there has any question about that, I've written a brochure called What Do You Mean Born Again? And it's available to you as 
to you free of charge on the internet among our resources and you can look at it there or if you need us to send you a physical copy we would be glad to do that simply call us at 800 in time and we'll send you the free brochure what do you mean born again the most important single thing I could say to anybody because that's what it takes to be ready for the rapture thank you very much we're continuing on as quickly as we can uh, Pat is calling from Florida hello Pat Hi, Irvin. Thank you so much for your ministry. Uh, appreciate uh, I have it. a question. How do you recommend starting a discussion with others about how the current events line up with Bible prophecy? Well, I'll tell you how I do it, that I'm very comfortable with. Many times uh, I will say, well, I found the United States in the Bible. And many of them will immediately say, Really? Uh, where is that? So then I start into Daniel chapter 7. It's easy to quickly tell them about the lion and the eagle's wings and the wings being plucked and then the bear. And most people at least understand that the symbol of Great Britain is the lion, the symbol of America is the eagle, the symbol of uh, Russia is the bear. Most people at least understand that much, and that gives you a basis to get started from. That's one way I would do it. And then another really easy thing to illustrate is the prophecy about the mark of the beast, that there will come a time when you'll have to have a mark or a number in order to be able to buy or sell. Well, that's not been possible for 2,000 years since the prophecy was given, but yet we all can see the cashless society coming at us right now. Uh, the businesses are being mandated that they must pay using direct deposit. Uh, they, all of us must uh, pay a lot of our bills in that way. Uh, the banks, the branch banks are getting less and less because they want all banking to be done electronically. We, it is obvious we are moving to a case of society right now and the Bible prophesies that for the end time and that you will be required to participate in the cashless society or else you will not be able to buy or sell anything. So those are just a couple of examples and they are many because many subjects will come up and you can say, do you realize that's prophesied in the Bible? And if you know your prophecies, you don't have to know all the prophecies. If you would just master Daniel 7, if you would go through the Understanding the End Time series, those 14 lessons and really digest them until you can be conversational with them so that it's mm -hmm. easy for you to talk about them off the cuff. That alone would equip you. Now, if a person doesn't feel like they can do all that, we have a lot of people that have the Understand the End Time series. They'll just loan them the first tape and say, if you like this, bring it back. I'll give you the next one. And they just let the tapes do the talking. So that's another way you can do it. Mm -hmm. Very good. And I know, um, you know, there's the, the length of the beer and all that. Um, where, where is Germany right now? Um, currently, I, I you don't care much about Germany. Um, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what I do, Pat. Uh, Germany is dominating Europe right now. Most people don't realize it because they don't want to draw attention to themselves because they are dominating 28 nations, uh, 550 million people. So I'm out of time. Most of us walk around day by day blind to the prophecies being fulfilled right before us. Every news report brings a new piece to the puzzle in the race towards the final seven years and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, more than ever, it is important for God's people to understand the times in which we are living. On November the 12th, 2013, we opened our Jerusalem Prophecy College in downtown Jerusalem. These same courses are now available online for people who are unable to attend the classes in person. We welcome students to join us and discover the link between current events and the prophecies of the Bible. Take your place in the prophecy of Daniel 1133. Enroll in the Jerusalem Prophecy College today. Go to JerusalemProphecyCollege.com. Just to follow up on our last caller concerning Germany. Uh, there, Germany is the strongest uh, force in the European Union. By far, and the European Union has 550 
um, populate 550 million population, and they passed America economically in 2007. Most people don't realize how strong Europe is, and Germany dominates Europe. If Germany's against it, it does not happen. So uh, you're right, Germany has tried to maintain a low profile because so many fear Germany uh, because of what happened in World War I and World War II. And any time Germany begins to assert itself, it sets off the alarm bells. But don't forget it. Germany is going to be a major player in the end time. The Bible says in Revelation 13, 1 and 2, that the combo beast there represent the kingdom of the Antichrist. The body will be the body of the leopard, which is Germany. So Germany is going to play a very strong dominant role in the end times during the time of the Antichrist. All right, right back to the phones now, and let's go to Kansas. Sandy is calling from Kansas. Hi, Sandy. Hi. I uh, would like your take on the scripture in John 20, starting with verse 21, where Jesus is telling the disciples he's sending them out as the Father sent him, and then later he says, if you forgive anyone, it's forgiven, and so on. And if you withhold, it's withheld. But what I was really wondering is how that relates to what he said, that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Yes, and that's a very important question you're asking, because some people say, well, the apostles received the Holy Spirit right there. They did not, because a long time after this, Jesus leads the apostles to the Mount of Olives, and he instructed them, do not leave Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. He spoke of the promise of the Father, which was the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So even though he told them, receive the Holy Ghost, he was commanding them, when it becomes available, make sure you receive it. Mm -hmm. But he, they could not receive it at that time. You remember toward the end of his ministry, I think this is John chapter 7, he went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles and they were pouring out the water libation and all of a sudden Jesus stood and cried with a loud voice, Ho, everyone that thirsts, let him come unto me and drink. And any man that drinketh of the water that I shall give out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And then it says, Thus spake he of the Spirit which was not yet given, for he was not yet glorified. A person, no one could receive the gift of the Holy Ghost until after the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So he was merely warning them, commanding them, when it does become available, make sure that you receive it. Okay, thank you. That clears that up for me. I appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Sandy. Uh, let's go now to Wisconsin. Dale is calling. Hello, Dale. Dale, are you with me? Okay, perhaps Dale had to leave us. Uh, let's go to our next caller. We're going to Florida, and Richard is from Florida. Hello, uh, Richard. Hello, Pastor Irving. Uh, thank you. I finished the Jerusalem Prophecy College. Congratulations. And you do a great job of preparing people for what we're going through ahead. My question is on the United States and the Mark of the Beast. It seems like there's a real bifurcation going on in the United States. I know I've gone to the website. They've brought it up a couple times. We are still in. We're still in. And you can see there's a lot of people that want to basically exit the United States economy but still participate in the economy. You see that happening in the United States where many people will become part of the mark of the beast or the end time economy, the world government. I do not see that, Richard, because Good. it appears to me that this mm -hmm. election will be the pivotal turning point because right. this election yeah. is very much between free enterprise and socialism. Uh, I mm -hmm. never thought I would see the day when one of our two mm -hmm. major parties would be so blatantly socialistic mm -hmm. I suppose Bernie mm -hmm. Sanders did as much to promote that as any other person because he came out, he's been a vowed socialist for a long time. Well, he came pretty close to winning the Democratic nomination for the presidency yeah. this year. 
He did not get that nomination, but he has given his total endorsement to uh, Joseph Biden. And most all of the main parties now in the Democratic Party have now openly adopted socialistic policies. Whether they say that or not, they now are for, uh, uh, they're for yeah. uh, state uh, health care. They are for mm-hmm. all kinds of governmental intervention. They are moving very strong towards socialism and against capitalism. So that's pretty much the crux of this election, which way we will go. It's my opinion that Mm -hmm. capitalism and free enterprise is going to win, and that will move us away from the world government uh, like the Bible Uh prophesies. We will not be in the world government beast of Revelation 13, 1 through 2. No eagle's wings there. And yet... We are in Revelation 12. The eagle there is protecting Israel against the Antichrist and against the world government. And we pretty much see the United Nations against Israel and the U.S. supporting Israel against the United Nations. So everything that's prophesied in the Bible, we see aligning right now in reality in world politics. So I, I have no doubt that that's where we're headed. Thank you, Pastor. I'll I'll hang up now. Okay. Thank you, Richard. Appreciate the call. Uh, We're going now to Mississippi, and Brian is calling. Hi, Brian. Hey there. Do let me say that I really enjoy your program and everything. Thank Uh, you. It it really helps out with my studies a lot and all. Uh, I wanted to go about asking you and like I say, if anybody may have ever uh, thought about this, it would definitely have to be you. Uh, I pay really close attention to uh, how Christ fulfills the law and everything. And uh, on, let's see, it was the year, I think, 2017, on the Feast of Trumpets, I woke up kind of cracking a joke and everything. You know, people who study that stuff say it's very likely that Christ could end up sounding the trumpets on the Feast of Trumpets and everything, but in basically a joking manner. I cut the television on, and the World Trade Summit was going on, and it nearly shot me. And uh, I was hearing the words, peace, 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 all over the uh, news channel like you wouldn't believe. And... uh, all of the G20 leaders went into the background, uh, including Emmanuel Macron. He was he was hanging on President Trump like you wouldn't believe. Do you see where there may have been a possibility at the Feast of Trumpets of, of 2017 at that World Trade Summit that the peace treaty may have been signed when they went back? Uh, actually, Brian, no. Now, the World Trade Summit is very important. Uh-huh. I know in January they're, the, they're having it in Davos, Switzerland, the World Economic Forum. And they go to these places to plan what the world government is going to look like. Uh-huh. So you're certainly not off track. However, I do not believe they could have signed the peace agreement because the Bible says when they sign this agreement that the Temple Mount would be placed under a sharing arrangement. Well, that has not happened yet. And then it says in the first three and a half years that the temple will be built. Well, obviously, if they signed it in 2017, the temple would have to be built or almost finished by right now. So, no, I do not believe that they could have signed the peace agreement at that time. But I do know that they're working towards just these very things, including one world government, as fast as they possibly can. Do you know about how long that with modern day equipment it might would take to build a new temple. You know, I asked Rabbi Heim Richman, who is the executive director of the Temple Institute, I asked him face to face, Rabbi, if the government calls you right now and says, we've got a deal, go build the temple, how long would it take you? He said to me, with modern technology, we've calculated that we could do it in less than one year. Okay, so probably wouldn't be much of a chance that 
it was signed in 2017. Well, you answered a good question. I've been harboring on my mind for quite some time. Okay, well, don't go to sleep the wheel because it's getting ready to be signed. And uh, by God's grace, I've asked the Lord, Lord, please help me not to make a mistake. Help me to know for certain when this agreement is signed. And one of the things that I have come up with is when that agreement is signed, the Temple Mount is going to be placed under a sharing arrangement and all people will be able to openly worship there. So that hasn't happened yet, but we're getting closer and closer all the time. It's, it's going to be very interesting to watch all the pieces of the puzzle fall into place. Thank you, Brian. Uh, let's go now to California. Monica is calling from California. Hello, Monica. Hello, Brother Baxter. Um, just wanted to let you know that we enjoy listening to you. <laughs> so um, I just had a question. Um, why don't some of the ministers preach um, the end time? Most of the time it's because, Monica, they don't understand it. And if you don't understand something, you're better off to leave it alone until you do understand it. That's the vast majority of ministers do not understand it. Now, we have packaged understanding the end time to give people a way to come up to speed quickly about the end time. But many ministers specialize in other areas. They're busy building their churches or pastoring their churches or just maybe they're not interested. Maybe, there are some ministers don't think anybody understands it. Since they don't understand it, they assume nobody else does either, which of course is not true. But nevertheless, that's basically the reason they don't deal with it. Now, when the Revelation commentary is completed, volume number two, which it will be within the next three, two or three months, uh, then we will have from chapter one through chapter 22 of Revelation, hopefully presented in such a way that uh, ministers and lay people around the world can understand it. So hopefully that's going to help with that situation. Oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah. Um, also, I wanted, I don't know if I have time, but I wanted to ask you, um, we had heard, like, on one of your um, messages that you were, you know, speaking that um, that you didn't think that the one world government would, like, be here in, I believe, like, the United States or California, for that matter. But, I mean, why is that? Why, why don't you think that? It's because the Bible says it. In Revelation 13, verse 1 through 2, there's a beast with the body of the leopard, the feet of the bear, the mouth of the lion, the ten horns of the ten horn kingdom. All of those animal symbols were used in Daniel 7 to tell us which nations would be on the earth at the time of the second coming. But the lion had eagle's wings. But in Daniel 7, 4, the wings were broken from the eagle. We don't, um, from the lion. We don't see the eagle in Revelation 13 in the combo beast, which symbolizes the government of the Antichrist. But we do see the eagle in chapter 12 fighting against the Antichrist and his kingdom, protecting Israel from it. That's the reason I am so certain that the United States of America won't be a part of the one world government of the Antichrist. And if we're not part of the government of the Antichrist, we're certainly not going to require our people to worship the Antichrist. That's the reason I feel so strongly about it. Listen, God bless you all. We're totally out of time today. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, go to endtime.com. God bless you all. This has been End of the Age, brought to you by the faithful partners of End Time Ministries. If you're not currently a partner with End Time Ministries, or if you would like more information, we invite you to call us at 1-800-END-TIME. That's 1-800-363-8463, or visit us online at endtime.com. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page.